over two and a half months of building this motor, filming every step of the process so I can make an awesome video for you guys. During the process of tuning and getting this thing ready to hit the water, this happened. not good i'm not sure just how bad it is yet but let's rip it apart and see what i broke this time send it so you see what had happened was so we got this 420 predator motor did a bunch of modifications to it getting it ready for a review video and did a bunch of really cool stuff to this motor we increased the compression did a bunch of head works tons of mods this thing was going to be really awesome got it all fired up it was running like an absolute champ and something went kaboom not sure what it was but there was a lot of smoke and now it's uh it's not turning over anymore so i want to rip this thing apart and see if it is salvageable or if it's down like four flat tires Whew. oh yeah by the way we got new t-shirts uh link down in the description box below if you want to get you a youtube certified master boat builder shirt i love these things i get some really funny looks when i wear it to the grocery store people are like so at first glance i don't see anything crazy there's no new holes in the block <laughs> there's no rod sticking out the side so I'm hoping it's just something internal. I'm not sure what would have caused all of the smoke, but we had a ton of smoke coming out of the air filter and then this little breather right here. I've already loosened up the valve cover just so I could check inside there. Don't see anything right offhand, so let's drain the oil and start pulling stuff apart and see what we come up with. So this motor had fresh motor oil in it right after I rebuilt it. It was running Royal Purple. I think it was 10W30. So we'll see what the oil looks like. I don't see anything crazy it's got a funky smell to it not what i'm used to smelling in motor oil it's like a like a burnt kind of smell almost yeah it looks like there is some chunky stuff in there and some metallic -y bits so uh, let's get into it i just dumped all that oil and you can definitely see there is some chunky bits in there big chunky bits that's not good. Right, that was only the first half of the oil. Let's drain the rest and see what we come out with. Yeah, I'm just watching this pour out, and there's just little pieces of metallic chunks coming out with it. Oh, there was a big chunk. Hmm, I wonder what we broke on the inside of this motor. Oh, yeah, now it's just straight metallic stuff coming out. I can see it really good. All right, well, the flywheel magnet is still on there, so that's good. That didn't come undone. Coil gap still looks good. I'm just checking the flywheel, make sure we don't have any cracks in it. That looks okay. All of the rockers look good. This has roller rockers in it. Push rods are still in place. Nothing up here looks out of place or broken, so head may be still good. Let's pull it off and see. Head bolts are all still torqued down, so that's good. Push rods aren't mushroomed out. They look okay. Looks like the lifters are okay as far as I can see. I'll lean that back a little bit so that when I go to pull all these bolts off, oil won't come out everywhere. Alright, I see lots more shiny bits down in the cover here. Governor gear seems okay. So I think I found the problem right there. The rod is, looks like the rod cap is either broken or something ain't right, but. So it looks like the bolt backed out right in here. And uh, that's probably what all this chunky mess is, is the bearing men eat all the pieces from slapping up against the, uh, <laughs> the crankshaft. Go ahead and pull the cam out. Everything on the cam looks to be okay. Lifters are all right. Check the balance shaft. That surface seems to be okay. That one seems all right. 
governor's still intact and our balance shaft bearing seems to be okay. So yeah, it just looks like that bolt backed out. And that's all the noise that I was hearing is this thing rattling around and it probably ate up the bearing. So let's go ahead and get this rod and the piston out and we'll take a look at it. And I'll also have to pull this crankshaft and see if this crankshaft is severely damaged or not. The threads still look okay. I don't see anything major wrong with them. So I think it just maybe weren't torqued from the factory, right? Or maybe it's because I was running it at like, you know, six bajillion RPMs. That bottom one came out with no issues. This one's still, it's not very tight, but eh, almost like the threads are messed up on it or something because this thing should spin out pretty easy and it's it's not wanting to. Oh yeah, that bearing is gone. And it's also why the bolt is not wanting to come out. The uh, actual bearing surface is eating into the bolt some. Let's see if I can get this out. Yeah, that is bad. That is uh, not good at all. Yeah, that rod, the bearing surface of the rod is absolute toast. The piston seems to be okay. The rings seem to be okay. Cylinder bore doesn't look terrible. I don't see any scoring or anything on it. And it is well lubricated. But that crankshaft is not looking pretty. We'll have to pull it out and take a look at it. Yep, just trying to clean this up a little bit. That is all <laughs> the rod. <laughs> Just bits and pieces of it. Flywheel still looks good. Don't don't mind how bougie it is. We we'll talk about that in the in the next video. Looking like this crankshaft may be gone like freight train gone like yesterday, as Montgomery Gentry would say. It's got some pretty significant scoring on there. I don't know if that is the actual bearing surface that has kind of heated up and transferred over to the crankshaft. You can actually see the heat signature mark right here where it heated up from that thing beating on it so much. The bearing seems to be okay. I might have to take this thing and see if it can get polished, if it's still in spec, but I highly doubt it. So I'm curious to hear what all the YouTube certified experts on uh, small engines have to say about this one. Let me know down in the comments what you think happened and where we should go from here. There's a bunch of possibilities about what could have happened. Could have been Ching Fong Fong Fing over in China, forgot to tighten up the rod bolts all the way. It could have been that I was revving this thing at like 6,000 RPMs with the governor still in it. Do you think this was absolute trash or should we try to get it polished out and maybe try to reuse it and see if it is still in spec? Probably going to take the opportunity to go ahead and get a billet rod for this while we've already got the engine torn apart. I have never had a problem with Predator rods before, but I've never spun one over 5,000 RPMs. And now that I have, I've pretty much lost all my faith in uh, Predator's rods. So if I'm going to continue spinning engines up to the moon in RPMs, then I think billet rods at minimum is going to be necessary. But I am very curious to read you guys' comments and see what you think and where we should go from here. A Senate John Bo's video would not be complete without some time in the haters corner. I've got my hater raid, so here we go. If you're not familiar with the haters corner, what we like to do at the end of every video is stand in a corner and see who was the most butt hurt in the comments section over the last couple of weeks. And because we know that people are really, really sensitive on the interweb, we don't use their real names. We just call them Scooter. Our first Scooter commented and wrote, the only way to make the smaller drain plug fit is to use Flex Seal to put your tractor tires on your Honda Civic. I have so many questions, Scooter. I'm not going to say you're the dumbest person that's ever left a comment on my YouTube channel, but I am going to say you better hope that person doesn't die. Our next Scooter dropped a comment and said, .050 is a metric measurement, bud. Just saying. That made me laugh, though. Actually, 0 .050 is 50 thousandth of an inch, not 50 thousandths of a millimeter or a centimeter. And last time I checked, this is America. The only thing metric that we have here in America is the number of kilowatt hours that your Prius gets. Our next scooter wrote, hey, 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 go take welding classes. Rivets don't last long. You did a good job, though. I think he was trying to say though. First off, Scooter, hey, is not spelled hey, it's spelled hey. 
What in the world is wrong with you? Two, I don't need welding classes. I already know how to weld. This video that he commented on was made for people who don't know how to weld and they want to rivet their boat together. Number D, rivets do last a long time. Most of the boats I work on are riveted boats, like the one that was we were talking about in this video was made in the 70s and the rivets have held up just fine. Rivets hold all kinds of stuff together. Airplanes, AK-47s, submarines. Welding is all fine and good, but not everybody knows how to weld, so some people want to learn how to rivet. But I will tell you this one little fact, Scooter. There is one single tree out there somewhere in this world, and that tree's only job is to replace all the oxygen that you've been stealing from everyone. Go find that tree and apologize to it. Our next scooter commented on the same video. He wrote, thanks for promoting, just left the channel. Yellow hand, thumbs down. Oh, he left the channel. Hmm. Bye, Felicia. Nobody's gonna miss you. I hope you go to a pet store and get bit by a dehydrated ferret. Our next scooter commented on another video. He wrote, aeronautical space engineer brain surgeon here, and I have to say that you're an idiot for having stainless steel in contact with aluminum. Well, Scooter, that comment was about as useful as a white crayon, but just so you know, stainless steel is allowed to touch aluminum and it will be just fine. But since Scooter seems to be so concerned about what I'm doing with my life, I hope the next time that Scooter goes to Walmart to buy some stainless steel washers, I hope he gets stopped by those ridiculous Comcast salesmen every single time he goes in there. Ugh. Our next Scooter left a comment and said, Legend has it that Sendit hasn't shaved since he was born, dot, 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 and he still has to glue on a fake beard. Always gotta be somebody hating on the beard. And that's okay, because not everyone can have a great beard. Someone has to stand off to the side and clap for us people with awesome beards as we walk by. Our next scooter commented over on my video about why I like mud motors. He wrote, I didn't learn anything about 1980s 9.5 Evan Rude and Johnson's from this video. At least it has a cool trolling motor segment. I don't know why anyone in the world would click on a video that says why I like mud motors and expect to learn anything about a 9.5 horsepower Johnson or an Evan Rude. I didn't even know they make 9.5 horsepower. I thought it was 9.9. And where in the world did we talk about trolling motors in that video? I think he's confusing trolling motors with trolls, because Scooter's definitely trolling my videos. You know what, Scooter? I think you've had a long, stressful day. You should probably relax and go slip into something more comfortable, like a coma. And our honorable mention for the week, Scooter writes, New subscriber here. Love the videos. However, it is now my life goal to be in the Scooter section of a video. So, here it goes. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Well, Scooter, I showed that comment to my mama, and my mother said that I should not let what you say get to me because you probably smell like nickels and she hopes you choke on a cheese stick. So for the rest of you non-scooters who actually care at all about this channel, just a little update. I know a lot of you have been emailing me and messaging me wondering where in the world I have been. Been very busy at our boat shop, Tiny Boat Nation Southeast. Working on a bunch of new cool products and I will be showcasing them here on the channel very, very soon. As far as project videos go, I'm a little disappointed that I blew this motor up. So that I'm going to get it fixed because I got a really cool long tail kit that I want to show you guys on the 16 foot boat project bottom land bateau. And now that the weather is warm, I'm actually allowed to go outside. I don't do anything below about 80 degrees. It's too cold for me. So I will be back working on our other projects very, very soon as soon as I get caught up with this whole motor fiasco that didn't go the way that I planned. I've also had some companies reaching out about doing product reviews, some mud motor related and some not, some just like really cool boat products. And we've also had some customers at the shop that let me use their boat and their mud motors to do some reviews. So if you guys got anything specific that you'd like to see a review on, leave a comment down below. Before we sign off, let's take a moment and always remember, money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you a boat. And it can also buy you one of these cool YouTube Certified Master Boat Builder shirts. Go get you one while they're still hot. Link is down below in the description. I'll catch you guys on the next one.